Okay, guys, things are getting worse here between the trifecta of the Axis and the Allies, it seems like. World War II turning into World War III. Hopefully not, but it seems like China, Russia, and North Korea seemingly seems like they're teaming up against us. And look at what just happened here. North Korea just fired two more ballistic missiles after the threat to the U.S. Yeah, and this came after the U.S. just held drills with South Korea. And North Korea fired these missiles from a submarine. Yeah, and they actually... Uh, release these pictures here, which I will show you, which is kind of disturbing here. Yeah, you guys can take a look here uh, at this. It's crazy. They're shooting these missiles out of these submarines here. And then showing the world what they're doing here. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. So here's the submarine that North Korea used. And this is what they shot out. So they're warning us. Yeah, so this came after South Korea and the U.S. militaries launched their biggest joint exercises in years. While North Korea says it's testing submarine fire cruise missiles in an apparent protest of the drills, it views as an invasion rehearsal. North Korea's launch has signals the countries likely will conduct provocative weapons testing during the U.S. South Korean drills that are expected to run for 11 days. Yeah, and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered his troops to be ready to repeal rivals' frantic war preparation moves. That's his quote. Yeah, and North Korea's increasing nuclear threats, along with concerns about China's ambitions, is pushing the United States to beef up its Asian alliances. Yeah, and here's what North Korea said. The North the North Korea's central news agency said that the launches of the two cruise missiles from a submarine off its east coast showed a resolve to respond with, quote, overwhelming powerful force to the intensifying military maneuvers by the U.S. imperialists and the South Korean puppet forces. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they called the missile strategic weapons and said their firings verified the posture of the country's nuclear war deterrence. This implies that North Korea intends to arm the cruise missiles with nuclear warheads, though it's still unknown if it has overcome the last remaining technological bearers, barriers to acquire functioning nuclear-tipped missiles. And it was said that the missiles flew more than two hours drawing figure eight shaped patterns, demonstrating an ability to hit targets 1,500 kilometers away. Yeah, and think about this. Imagine if these missiles hit something. Imagine if they hit Japan. Imagine if they hit China. Imagine if they hit any U.S. territory or U.S. ally territory by accident imagine what would happen then imagine all the missiles that russia is shooting at ukraine remember when everybody said that russia well not everybody but a lot of people said russia's not going to invade ukraine it's just fear-mongering well look where we are now in year number two well imagine if russia shoots one of those into NATO territory by accident. Imagine what would happen then. Yeah, remember, Poland's right next door. And remember, we also have a lot of news coming out right now that 
Russia has plans to invade Moldova, Belarus. They've already taken over Crimea. What's next? And we have North Korea, China, Russia. How close are we to something happening besides the massive Ukraine war? Kind of makes you wonder, where will we be a year from now? Is things going to escalate further? Did you think the Ukraine war would last over a year? Did you think it would cost hundreds of billions of dollars, or at least over $100 billion of U.S. taxpayer money, and we would still be helping Ukraine fend off an invasion from Russia with no end in sight? Russia says they're not leaving unless they get to take over about 20% of Ukraine. And uh, they've already leaked plans to take over Moldova and uh, now Belarus. Am I missing another country? And now there's some murmurs about maybe the country of Georgia, as there's some massive protests going on there right now as well. Yeah, there's also protests actually going on. Yeah, and actually Belarus, which is kind of a puppet country for Putin, um, they've been helping Putin for a while now. And the president there is, is known to kind of do orders for Putin. Uh, it's been, a, a document has been released or under uh, uncovered that Putin wants to take over Belarus here within uh, a few short years. Belarus is now seeing sabotage from within as citizens protest aid to Russia because apparently some citizens don't want to become part of Russia. Imagine that. Belarusian saboteurs are targeting trains and planes to hinder the Russian war efforts because, well, they realize that invading another country and doing what they're doing to those people against their will is bad, and that they shouldn't just go invade other countries. So there's citizens in Belarus that are sabotaging their own cities and country to stop supplies going into Russia, or going, yeah, Russia, and also going into Ukraine to help the Russian troops so they can't go and help Russia. Imagine that. Yeah, so, um, and imagine how dangerous this is. This would be like you're inside Russia and you're sabotaging, you know, the Russian army. That's a very, very dangerous game. I mean, you do something like that over there and... Liable to never be seen again. <laughs> exactly. You're liable to never be seen again uh, if they find out who did it, so... You better better do that under the cover of night and not tell a soul. You tell anybody at all, and <laughs> that could be your ass, for, for lack of a better word, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, just like we've seen some of these uh, these Russian soldiers um, go on TV or you know Telegram or or YouTube and stuff. They literally had to cover their faces, pleading for aid. Because if they find, and even that might not be enough, because if they cover, they cover their faces, they can still figure out who they are with their voice or even the surroundings or stuff like that. Um, it's really sad. It's really sad. And honestly, I really feel like when this does come to an end one way or another, a, a lot of people in Russia and a lot of the troops are not going to even know what the full story was very similar to World War II when a lot of the German troops did not know what the real truth was going on. They did not know. Again, they thought they were the good guys. They thought they were liberating these other countries. They thought that they were going in to help them. And 
you know, I mean, you, you guys know some of the stories if, if you've looked into this stuff. You know, they thought that they were going in and, and you know, that the German troops were going into, you know, for whatever reasons, right? They thought that they were the good guys, you know? They, you know, even though if you if they really would have thought about it, they were going in and invading all these other countries. How can you really be the good guys? But I, you know, I don't know. Maybe a lot of these people don't think about it. And the other problem is, this is the, the this is the main problem. Say you're a Russian soldier. First of all, they have a draft. Um, uh, if you if you didn't know this, every single man in Russia has to serve i think it's one year in the russian army it used to be two years and now they've a few years ago they they went on to one year because of um, i believe it's protest and um they have a mandatory sentence <laughs> i'll call it a sentence in the russian army for every man every man so just first of all just think about that how crazy that is you're, if you're born a man in Russia, you have a mandatory sentence in their army. And now they're having a war where they're invading another country and it's mandatory you go to war. Just think about that. So they're mandatorily sending you over to invade another country and look at what they're doing. And if you don't go, you're a traitor and what do you think they're going to do to you? If you don't follow their orders, what do you think Russia does to those people? You can let me know your thoughts in the comments, but uh, I don't think Russia takes too kindly to those people. I would imagine at the bare minimum, it's probably 10 years in prison. So it's not like you can just, and uh, by all means, if you desert, you better get out of the country and... Uh, never come back and good luck doing that because i imagine it's not easy but i'm sh i'm sure it could be done but um yeah this this is kind of the problems with just one of the problems yeah so you have to serve in the army you are forced to go into ukraine and you're invading another country and look at what they're forcing these guys to do and you're, you you have to follow orders. You, what do, what is your what is your other choice if you don't follow orders? So just think about what these men are being forced to do. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments, and I'll keep you up to date here. So it's, if you really think about some of that stuff that that a lot of people don't know, it's kind of unbelievable. So I'll keep you up to date here, and we'll see. But I. I have a feeling this is going to be going on for a while. Yeah, if you appreciate these videos, don't forget to hit the like button for us. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. And uh, click the bell icon as you subscribe. Here's some videos you should watch next. Here's a video I just did about saving Social Security and, and how the government stepped in. Pretty interesting video here. So click on that video next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.